Welcome to Grab the MD. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and spread the word. Alright, we talked very little about ejection fraction in a previous video, so we are going to discuss it in some more detail in this video. So what is ejection fraction? Ejection fraction tells us how much blood is pumped out with each heart beat out of the total volume of blood coming into the heart. As per equation, ejection fraction equals stroke volume divided by end diastolic volume. Let's go back to our heart diagram and make some sense out of it. Veins bring back the blood, fill up the heart, giving end diastolic volume. Some of this blood is pumped out as stroke volume during contraction. So stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped out and end diastolic volume is the incoming volume of blood. Let's say end diastolic volume is 100 and stroke volume is 60. 60 by 100 equals 0 0.6. We multiply it by 100 to get the answer in percentage because percentage makes more sense. Once more, ejection fraction equals stroke volume by end diastolic volume. Recall from earlier videos that stroke volume equals end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume. That is, how much blood is coming and how much blood is left behind. If we subtract these two values, we get how much blood has left during contraction, which is stroke volume. So we can expand our equation for ejection fraction. Instead of stroke volume, we can put the equation for stroke volume here. End diastolic volume minus end systolic volume divided by end diastolic volume. Let's go back to our heart and put in some numbers. Blood comes back, fills the heart and gives us end diastolic volume. Some blood is pumped out when the heart contracts. What's left behind is end systolic volume. Let's say what came in was 200 milliliters and what's left behind is 80 milliliters. So the ejection fraction is 200 minus 80 divided by 200 or 0 0.6 multiplied by 100 and we get our answer in percentage. So the ejection fraction is 60%. So what does ejection fraction tell us? It tells us how well the cardiac muscle is contracting. If contraction is good, we get a good ejection fraction. If contraction is weak, we get a low ejection fraction. That brings us to the question, how do we measure ejection fraction in real life? By doing echocardiography. And what's the best way to get a more accurate measurement? Cardiac catheterization. Doing a cardiac cath is potentially dangerous and difficult to perform because we have to put a catheter inside the heart. ECHO is simple and easy. That's why ECHO is the first test of choice in routine clinical care. We know from these tests that in normal healthy people, the normal range of ejection fraction is between 55% to 70%. Some conditions can change this and give us increased ejection fraction. For example, anxiety because of sympathetic system activation which increases stroke volume which increases ejection fraction. Exercise also increases stroke volume and ejection fraction but within physiologic limits. In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, we have a strong bulky cardiac muscle which can contract strongly and push out more blood. This gives us increased stroke volume and ejection fraction. Conversely, some cardiac diseases can reduce ejection fraction. For example, dilated cardiomyopathy where we have kind of weak floppy cardiac muscle which can't contract much so less blood is pumped out, stroke volume is down, and 
ejection fraction is reduced. In myocardial infarction, we get a dead cardiac muscle, which cannot contract. There's less blood out, decreased stroke volume, and a reduced ejection fraction. In valvular heart diseases, cardiac valves can't open or close properly, so there is messy blood flow due to which stroke volume goes down and ejection fraction is decreased. In systolic heart failure, cardiac muscle is weak, which cannot generate much force, so less blood is pumped out to give us decreased stroke volume and reduced ejection fraction. Remember, not all types of heart failure give us reduced ejection fraction. Some can have normal ejection fraction. For example, a diastolic heart failure has problem with filling, but it can contract just fine. So whatever blood comes in, it can pump it out. This type of heart failure is called heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. An example is restrictive cardiomyopathy where heart muscle becomes stiff and can't be filled. So that's pretty much it for ejection fraction. We will do some more videos in the future, so be sure to subscribe to my channel to stay updated.